the 2016 Bentley Bentayga. Now, this is the all new crossover SUV, whatever you want to call it, that Bentley, it, they just simply can't build them fast enough because they have a massive hit on their hands. And what we're wondering is, how is this going to affect the rest of the Bentley lineup? Welcome to this latest episode of Car Buzz Unboxing Reviews. And finally, we have for you the Bentley Bentayga. And we also want to thank Los Gatos Luxury Cars for letting Carbos come on down and film this for you today. This is a very special car with a wild color. I wasn't expecting that color. What oh, is that? That is what they call orange flame. And, well, it costs an extra $5,715. The paint Save your costs money. almost $6,000. I'm not sure that paint is worth it, but whatever. If you you know what? I would do it just because it's, it's the paint color is just as obnoxious as the rest of the Bentega is, and, and I say that in all the right ways. When I first came out, I saw it in blue, it looked much nicer. Anyway, that that's just blue, the color, look at the uh, interior. The, the interior, now, look, I, I think with that orange exterior, with the black interior here, you see that orange stitching, It's they nailed it, this is great. This, this interior is just as high spec and high quality as you would expect from any Bentley. A yeah, typical Bentley opulence here. Uh, right. Every, everything you look at here is metal there's no First cheapness class. here they don't cut corners and when we get to pricing you're gonna see that they shouldn't be cutting corners considering what people are you know writing checks for now remember they made a fuss about this car because people said oh, it's just gonna be another soccer mom's car just an suv but this actually has proper off-roading it does now listen to this engine and it's just nuts <laughs> All right, so that was a six liter twin turbocharged W12 engine. 600 horsepower and 664 pound feet of torque. Yeah, okay, soccer moms are gonna be driving 600 horsepower around. They, they might be, actually. Anyway, that's what two V6s plugged together. Yeah, it's something, well, look, you gotta remember Bentley's part of the Volkswagen group and they came up with years ago Volkswagen, the W12 engine. And they've sort of stuck with it. and. This is the first Bentley model to have this latest version of it. So they're, it's cool they're still sticking with it and they're just evolving it. And they're gonna put it, what, in the Continental? Whatever it's a replacement is probably, yes. What about the Flying Spur W12? That must have the, yep. the new one that's yep. gonna come out. The S, remember? Yeah. So it's just, they're just applying this engine and you know, I, I this is literally going to be the new flagship for Bentley in terms of just outright sales. It's, it's an image vehicle, but it's just... That color is actually growing me. From the back, the way it sparkles there in the light. It's, yeah. it's actually not a bad color. No, and I'm really glad that you're able to see it in the, in the direct sun. As soon as you see it in the sun, yeah, with the silver chrome bar, that you see oh. wraps around the bottom of the car. Oh, it, it's, it's very just... Very elegant. And then you have the body color to lower body work. That costs an extra $1,335. Well, that silver... But yeah. the chrome bar. And the bright chrome lower grill, 1200 bucks. I think they're worth it, actually. Yeah, and these 21-inch five-spoke twin, uh, twin-spoke wheels... Eight hundred and fifty dollars. That's right, okay. Actually, yeah, that's yeah. all right. Yeah, they're nice. But look, would you get? I mean, would you even expect to have cheap wheels on a car like this to begin with? No. No. But you want extra special wheels, I guess, because. Yeah. But you know, you're I, extra special. Yeah, and we know that Los Gatos is going to be getting in more of these Bentegas in the future, and we just managed to film the very first one that we were able to get our hands on, and they're just going to get even more opulent Here as we time go. goes on. Oh. The Fable W12. Oh, I know. No, <laughs> imagine a soccer mom going from zero to sixty miles per hour in three and a half seconds. Zero to a hundred miles per hour, eight and a half seconds. Top speed, one hundred and eighty-four miles per hour. Those kids are going to get to soccer practice real fast. That's one quick mama. <laughs> and she's going to be going to the gas station a lot too because they're only going to get fourteen miles per gallon in the city, ten on the highway, and a combined eighteen. Don't ask about that. Don't, yeah. Total weight, 5,672 pounds. That is a beast. It is. And, and off-roading is, uh, is four-wheel drive? Four it, well, wheel yeah, drive? yeah. Again, it's got an eight-speed automatic transmission power is sent to all four wheels. And that's the cool thing about the Bentayga is that it really does have some real off-road credentials. Yeah, I've seen I mean, it. I've seen it up and down some trails. And now, it handles itself very nice. Right, right, right. Now, personally, I, I would be kind of nervous about taking it off-road. Uh, especially when you have, what is it, like $5,700 paint. 
What if something scratches that? I mean... Sure, you get a scratch, but you can get it wrapped before you take it out there. Clear oh, coat, yeah, yeah, clear, yeah, coat, clear coat, wrap. coat wrap, yeah. I mean, that goes without saying. If you're going to go through some narrow paths with some overhanging trees, yeah. you might want that. Now, what do you think of this interior? Yeah, it's amazing, but, you know, you're not going to get many better interiors than that. The Rolls no. Royce we saw recently, the Dawn, the Wraith. And that's, remember, Rolls that's Royce really is... the only thing this co- you can compare it to. And, and Rolls Royce is going to be coming out with their own SUV to compete with this. Oh, yeah, the luxury SUV segment's about to explode. And it already, in fact, it already is with this, and the competition is just racing to get to market. So these especially were, these were first, and Range Rover brought out their autobiography. The Range Rover SV autobiography, SV. right. Now, they already had the autobiography, but they anticipated this, so. Now, the word has it, they're, the next generation Range Rover is just going to take things to an even higher level because of this Bentayga. Uh, ah, oh, I wanted to show you this. Now, the rear seat here, it comes, the, the typical Bentayga comes standard with a bench seat. Right, okay. these are just two seats. Right, now this is the four seat comfort spec with a rear console package. This cost right here, these captain's chairs, get this, an extra $11,000. Wow. So you've got to be pretty sure that you're only ever going to want to take four people. Right. Because, That's it. Yeah. You're going to oh. spend money to, to take make, less people. To take less people, yeah. I would. I don't want more people. And this thing already weighs enough. It's definitely a statement. Oh, I like the badges on the on the chair there. And I love that diamond stitching too. Yeah, it's it's like this real mix of, you know, because remember, Bentley, owned by Volkswagen, kind of German, but at the same time, you still have that... English craftsmanship going on here too. It's, they did a really good job of, of blending the yeah, two. Yeah, handcraft details everywhere. Oh, even that that, that shifter. It, it just it's almost like a piece of jewelry. All these controls are the rotary dials. Yeah, um, everything's high class. Oh, jeez, and look at the clock too. You just have that traditional. Yeah, a lot of these high-end cars like the yeah it's... like those clocks. And I think that's a good thing. Instead of just having a digital clock there, it's kind of It makes cool. you feel classy. Right. Now, one thing I kind of noticed here is that the overall like, infotainment system, again, you have the standard 8-inch screen. It's that the driver's gauge console, like when you look at it. Now, remember we saw on those Audis, like the new A4, it has a 12.3-inch LCD screen. Again, Audi is part of Volkswagen Group. This doesn't have that. So Not yet. Is that because they don't think people really care? The drivers don't really care about that? I, I just don't think the technology was ready for the Bentayga. Ah, so when there's a facelift so, right, or something. right, so point? I'm kind of hoping, because, you know, you look at this, and then if you remember back to that A4 that we saw, it was just like, holy crap, that is ridiculously cool. So cool, just ridiculously cool, because you can get the entire nav system map right in front of the driver. But there's enough, you know, other amazing things about right. this car to not worry too much about that. Right, right, right. And then, you, again, here's, you know, your standard infotainment system. Uh, again, part of Volkswagen Group, Bentley, it's all going to work very, very well. Yeah, and so you I, can control everything. On yeah, you can, everything can be controlled here. Just look at vehicle settings, speed warning, all terrain. You can mo- uh, monitor the tire pressure from there. And again, this is really nothing new. Even the ride height. Yeah. And when you go off road, you're going to really want to pay attention to that. The last yeah. thing you want to do is scrape the bottom. Yeah, lift that straight up before you yes. go anywhere. Now, what's so cool about this is that. Not only has the Bentayga been a smash hit, they Bentley just can't build enough of them to meet demand. Now, just to give you an example, Bentley originally predicted that a good first year production number would be around 3,500 units. That was last year. Right, right, right. Now, this debuted at, in 2015, okay? Yeah. And at the time, they were like, Bentley's like, yeah, 3,500 units the first year. So all of them sold out. Just not, like that. Not that and I, right. So Bentley responded saying, okay, we're going to build an additional 1,500 for a total of 5,000 units in the first production year. Those additional 1,500, they were already spoken for the moment they announced it. So if Bentley you, took if you orders. want a brand new Bentayga as you want it, you're going to have to wait a while. There's already a backlog for 2017. But you can go and buy this one if you want. Yes, probably. <laughs> Look, by the time it got to the dealership and you know we filmed it and... Now might, we're talking it about gone. it. It might be gone. Yeah. That's why they're going to be getting more of them in because in any market where there is money, they're going to go. And it's the trendy car right now, or rather SUV to have. If you bought this and you're watching this video, send us a message. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you and just know what you think of this thing. Because we know there's a sunroof on this, but we couldn't open it, right? Right, the panoramic sunroof. 
We can't That's open standard, it. by the way. It was in travel mode. So oh, yeah. Just being delivered. It, yeah, it was fresh off the truck, and we just wanted... Ah, there it is. We just wanted to bring you this car right away. So... They disabled the uh, right. mechanism on that. So. And, but what's also really interesting is that these Bentegas, you're going to be able to get them with so many more extra custom features that people want. So when you... Hang on, going back to the uh, mm -hmm. luxury SUV market, this right. came out before everyone else. And do you reckon the, the buzz about these sort of cars... Like you said, the Rolls Royce is coming out. Lamborghini are going to bring out Lamborghini Urus. Right. There's even talk of the Jeep Grand Wagoneer is going to come out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that, but it might that might be a few years before it hits like 140, 150 grand territory. But do you reckon that's played to Bentley's advantage because these this these they're the only ones who have had a car like this on sale. For yeah. the last two years, people have heard about other ones coming and they just can't wait. That's always when you're first to market for anything like this. You're the ultimate winner. Right. Because people have identified the Bentega now as this uber luxury. There's no better SUV, right? SUV, now. right. This is the, the the trendy thing for rich people to have. It basically it used to be the Range Rover autobiography that type of level, but this just took it to a whole new level. And what's interesting is that Bentley first debuted a concept for this called the ESP9F. Back in, I believe it was like 2012, and it was ugly. EXP 9F. Or EXP, thank you, 9F. It was just ugly. And yeah, it was butt ugly. People were right, laughing at that. So, time. right, right. But Bentley listened to people, and they're like, you know what? They okay. Had to. They went back and redesigned it, and this is what you get. Now, I don't think the Bentega is the prettiest thing out there. Um, it was quite hard to but, keep the Bentley. You right, know, but they needed to keep it, give it that Bentley sort of. It was quite hard look. to do and make it an SUV. So right, right. It, but if you saw that initial concept, it was just like, oh man. It was hideous. Yeah. Yeah, it was just nasty. But Bentley learned they were onto something because of the massive response to it. Just because people were saying it was ugly, didn't really mean a bad thing. They got people's yeah, attention. People say, like, make it pretty, and I'll buy it. Right. Right. And, that's and then when Bentley made it clear that, look, it, it's going to have real bona fide off-road capability here. That just sparked people's interest even more. So by the time the production came in 2015, there was all this hype going on. So leading back to your question, all the other competitors, all they could do is kind of sit back and watch and try to catch up, which is what Rolls-Royce is doing right now. And that's going to be called what? What are they going to call that? I believe they're calling it the, the Cullinan. Something Cullinan. like Yeah, right. something weird... Like that, like like Bentega. What is what is that? Yeah, so they're getting okay, they're, they're getting away with weird names. Bentega is like a portmanteau of two words. I can't remember. It's some some rocky place somewhere in um, where was it? Basically, completely irrelevant. Sort of. It was trying. <laughs> yeah, to, it was right. trying to play to like his off-road abilities. Right. So anyway. Yeah. You you can look that up. I probably won't. But. What's interesting is that Lamborghini, as we well know, is working on developing the Urus concept to a production model. Whether they keep the Urus name or not is one thing, but the Urus is going to ride on the same platform as, as is Bentega. That's going to be more like a supercar SUV, isn't it? Right. It's going to, to avoid internal competition, they're going to really, because it's a Lamborghini, it's got to be somewhat nutso. Yeah. And they're just going to give it just extreme performance even though this goes 0 to 60 miles per hour in three and a half seconds yeah that is based supercar that's territory supercar already. territory yeah. like 10 years ago that was what Ferraris were doing so it's just to what go three seconds I guess something like that plus yeah. it'll have the extreme Lamborghini styling it's going to appeal to a different buyer right now what it what Bentley is already doing though is that they're preparing another version of the Bentayga maybe it won't even have the same name it's going to ride on the same platform. It's going to be have more of that coupe-like styling. You know, kind of like the BMW X6? Okay, yeah. That ugly, hideous thing? Yeah, you know Well, like Bentley is going for that coupe-like look, and it's going to have much more of an on-road feel as opposed to off-road capabilities. So they're already exploiting the segment even more. That's my point, is that Bentley is going to be at the top of the game when it comes to these uber-luxury SUV crossover vehicles. So will that be a bit cheaper because of... Probably no. It'll probably be even more expensive because they more know because they can get the money, they can get it. So people, why charge it less? Yeah, no, fair enough. So they know people don't really. So there's a lot of buyers out there who don't really care about the off-road. They just want a bit more style. Right. And look, if Bentley part of Volkswagen because of Dieselgate, they need the money. Right. They need the money. They need the money. And this having is, an offshoot of the Bentega is a relatively 
easy and fast way to get more money. And this is a cash cow right now. It is it? a complete cash cow, you're right. Speaking of which, pricing. Base price, $229,100. Yeah, no one pays that? What no. What are they really going to pay? This car right here with a $2,725 destination fee. Okay. That's insane. Why is it so expensive to, to travel to transport? Because it's a Bentley. To ensure. Grand total, $258,040. Now, these things can easily exceed $300,000, and we hope to bring you one of those next time because I want to see yeah I want to see a Bentega more than three hundred thousand dollars yeah we didn't really see any like rare entertainment no that the screens and all that sort of I stuff. want to see one of these things with like a bar in a cargo area remember that the concept had that well like you a, chill, the rip, a, fri a fridge for a champagne yeah, yeah you open up the rear lift gate which is by the way electronic oh, in the back, yeah. yeah in the back you just it was like a whole hamper. bar yeah it was a picnic hamper yeah I want to see that I want to see a customer ordering one of those things and Based on what people are just, they're begging Bentley, like, please, shut up and take our money for these. Amazing. You're going to see that. This is just the tip of the iceberg. You think a, a $258,000 Bentega is really all that much? Just wait. And then with Rolls Royce coming, Bentley just has to keep upping the bar. They will. They will have to. And, win. you know, it's just... So this for, the, for a first effort, it's pretty, pretty impressive. They nailed it. Yeah. They just can't build them fast enough, and in other global markets, there's a two-year wait list. Wow. So you'd have to pay probably well over the odds to get one now. Oh, yeah. Maybe just buy a Continental, and then we'll move you up on the Bentayga wait list, oh. Ferrari style. So anyway, everyone, we're out of time for today. Thanks for watching. Any questions, leave them in the comment section for us below, and we'll see you next time. See ya.